Hey guys, Derek Stark back with another video. No lie, a bird just crapped on my laptop. Uh, that sucks. But I'm happy to be back with you guys. Um, it's been a while. I apologize. I was just finishing up grad school. And by grad school, I mean my master's here at the University of Kansas. And uh, just spent two weeks back home in Wisconsin and did a lot of reflecting on this past year and, and some of the trials and tribulations that that I faced as a graduate student and was really just trying to dig deep and, and uncover why uh, some of these issues uh, arose throughout the year. And uh, that's kind of why I am going to talk today uh, about relationships, the power of relationships and social connection. Uh, so to start, like I just wanna ask you guys a question that obviously I won't be able to hear the answer to, but uh, just curious, think to yourself, how many people right now do you feel comfortable talking to uh, about a deep issue that you may be experiencing in your life? It's in 2004, there was a representative study conducted here in the United States, and it asked this precise question to Americans, um, and the average response was two. Uh, so, so the mean was two people that people felt comfortable talking to uh, in regards to issues that they were facing in their lives. And additionally, the mode of that study uh, was actually zero. So one out of every four people who responded to the survey said that there were zero people that they felt comfortable discussing a, a serious issue in their life with. And uh, I think that stems from a lot of things that uh, involving just kind of the way of the world right now and in the ways that we are disconnected. Um, and research shows that people who lack social connection are more at risk for anxiety, depression, uh, and they're also low social connection is also linked to violence and unsurprisingly suicide. Uh, and, and studies also show that there's a link between this lack of connection and even our cellular systems and that kind of occurs in in inflammation so it, it has so many negative impacts on us um, but our society keeps pumping out uh, eat healthy and work out and and focus on your physique and and all these superficial things but as I've discussed in prior videos, we, we don't have a focus on, on our mental health at all. And, and our emotional well-being should be the top priority. You know, your spiritual, emotional, and mental health, they have to be at the top. And I think they trickle down into everything else. I think you're physically healthier when you have fulfilled each of those needs, in all honesty. So it, obviously when we are socially connected, we see improvements in our psychological health. Uh, we maybe have more motivation to, to go to the gym or to exert ourselves to the next level when we are at the gym. Um, and even these studies have shown that there's oftentimes an increase in longevity for individuals who have that connection. I think you can see this with elderly people, you know, um, you're married to somebody for 60 years and, and you lose the love of your life and two weeks later, you know, you pass away and it's because you, you've lost that thing that was keeping you going, that, that social connection, the love that you had for another human being. And uh, I just think that it's really profound stuff. And I also am a firm believer that as human beings, we're social beings, you know, uh, we we have this innate desire to be connected to others. And, you know, some people are introverts. Some people are extroverts. For me, I, I don't need a ton of relationships. Uh, a handful of really, really good friends means more to me than a than hundred friends. And, and I know a lot of people that have hundreds of friends, but it's almost like they get lost in the crowd because these relationships aren't deep and, and they're not feeling internally fulfilled through the relationships. So there's one cool thing that I've kind of started to learn about, and it's called mirror neurons. So these are kind of the ways that we 
react when when we meet or interact with other individuals. So say I'm in a college classroom and one of my peers walks in and I can just tell that he's having a really rough time. You know, he, he looks down in the dumps and um, as a result, the muscles in my face will actually kind of lean towards a, a frown and, uh, and I'll feel internally empathy for him as if I'm going through the struggle or pain despite the fact that it's him. And, and, and this also works conversely in that if I have a friend who walks into the classroom and they're joyous and they just got hired a, their dream job, like I'm probably going to light up and smile and be like, awesome, man. Like I, I feel an ecstasy as well, living vicariously through them. Um, and I think this is just a small example of, of the power of relationships and how they can have such dramatic effects on us on even the cellular level that, that I discussed earlier. And as I think most everyone knows, there there's definitely an increase in loneliness in our society right now. You know, um, I think that stems from technology, social media, just constantly being in our phones. You know, one out of every three cars that drives by, I feel as if one of those individuals is... Uh, on their phone, they're texting or, or they're doing something. I'm walking on campus and half the people are in their phones and, and we're just not engaging with each, each other in the ways that they did decades ago. And, and I think that we're getting these short-term stimulations and maybe dopamine hits uh, and it feels good to, to get likes um, or, or be connected in, in these superficial, artificial ways. Just think if we took the time to invest into relationships, the time that we take to build our our, our social media brands and, and keep up with what's going on in Hollywood and, and for me, sports, like constantly reading box scores and, and all those nerdy things that really don't provide me meaningful value. Um, it's actually the number one reason for people going to therapy right now is loneliness. And... It's just, it's something that, as I spoke about earlier, I experienced big time in grad school this year, and I felt really disconnected and isolated, and it, it was tough, but as I look back, I needed to be more intentional about taking my free time and spending it with others rather than uh, thinking that I was recharging on my own, and, and some people do recharge in that way, but but we all need people in our lives to, to help fill us up, right? And as I've said, we're, we're social beings. We, we all deserve to be loved and we deserve compassion. And I think as we show others compassion, that it in turn comes back to us. Um, you know, I just think about the cyclical effect of, of smiling to somebody and, and then them smiling to somebody else and, and just the ways that a small thing like that or, or buying somebody's groceries or a coffee and the ways that that can have such uh, an effect on them that we will never see, but at the same time, it makes you feel good. Um, so, yeah, I just I think that it's so important to to invest more time into face to face interactions and uh, relationships. You know, whether that be sending a letter to an old friend, penning a short little letter giving somebody a call out of the blue, asking a buddy out for, for coffee or lunch, surprising your friend at work. Um, you can get creative. There's so many ways. Even You, you can utilize all these technologies um, to, to really invest into these relationships, especially if there's distance separating you. But, but I really, truly believe that there's an energy of, of being with somebody and, and feeding off of of them and and just loving them and and the world needs more love and yeah i'm gonna stop rambling but i really appreciate your time if you're still with me that's amazing um i'm still trying to kind of get my flow going with the youtube channel i'm going to be producing much more consistent content this summer but i am so grateful for the most valuable thing which is your time uh, i appreciate you giving me your ears and I hope your summer is off to a wonderful start. 
I'm uh, starting tutoring tomorrow, defending my thesis tomorrow, and I will officially be done with the master's program here. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.